Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming. My name's Lewis Nyman. I'm a designer and a front-end developer. I work for Wondercrowd, uh, but I actually work from the UK office and we're called Wonderroot, in case that confuses you. Uh, I've been working on Drupal Core for maybe two or three years. Um, I haven't really done much else apart from that in Contrib, because uh, I'm not really a module developer. I, um, I actually don't have full project access to create full Contrib projects in um, Drupal.org yet. It's a little bit embarrassing, maybe. I don't know. And um, I also um, I also worked a little bit on Drupal.org. I contributed to the Drupal 7 upgrade and a few other things. But this presentation is about Drupal and how we design the experience of using Drupal. Now, Drupal is designed to be a very flexible and powerful tool. But with that flexibility, um, you kind of lose some expectations of how it's supposed to be used and who's using it. And you kind of you sacrifice some control over the user experience. And I kind of want to talk about the problems that we face when we design a product like Drupal uh, that's open source and built by a community. And I want to talk about how we are solving those problems in Drupal 8. So what do we do when we try and design an experience? And how do we know when we're successful? It's, it's difficult, because an experience is really how you feel. It's not, um, it's not easy to measure. But um, you know when it's bad. You can, you can sense it. You can taste it, kind of like food. And it's, it's more than just being, just having something that's possible and understandable and even usable. Uh, because if you think about it, everything you've done in your life is possible. But it's not necessarily enjoyable. There are some things in life that you do uh, that are very painful. But you still do them. I don't know if this image translates over very well to the American audience. Is that an equivalent of a terrible uh, air, airline network here? Spirit? Spirit? OK. That's good, good advice to me. I... So a bad user experience can make us feel very frustrated and quite helpless and unsure of our own abilities. Um, humans can get very overwhelmed very easily. And instead of blaming the tools that they have in front of them, they just tend to blame themselves. So there are certain factors that can affect the experience of using Drupal, especially when, you de when you're designing the, um, the user interface. One factor is intimidation. Uh, it's e very easy to feel that when looking at something without touching it, that it feels very complicated, and you can feel out of your depth. And you can feel like you just don't have the skills to, to uh, complete the task in front of you. Inconsistency is another problem. If you expect something to happen and then something else completely different happens, unexpected, you, you tend to become very unsure of your actions and you tend to become very unsure of what you're doing. Um, you lose a lot of confidence in yourself instead of losing confidence in the tools. And another problem is with every feature and every function that we add uh, to a product, we increase the chances of inconsistency and we increase complexity. So why is user experience important to Drupal? Well, number one is the clients, because they're the ones that pay us to be here, and they're the ones that pay to help develop and use Drupal. And in the long run, if clients have to live with something that they're not happy with, then it builds up a lot of negative emotions. And it's not just for the solution that they're using. It's you know negative emotions about Drupal and negative emotions about the people who put them in that situation. And, and the thing is that people talk. People talk about Drupal. They talk about Drupal behind its back. And we know this because Drupal doesn't have a very strong reputation for being a usable product. But as well as clients, uh, we have to think about site builders. Because at one point before we became developers and we got to know Drupal a little bit better, we were all just site builders at one point, just clicking around, uh, trying to add things using the interface. And when you're a beginner, you don't necessarily want an expert's tool. You want to have a, a simple tool, something that you can just get through and just get it working to complete the basic tasks. And you don't want to have to learn every single, every single intricate part of the system uh, when you're starting out. You want just enough to get by. And sometimes uh, the problem is that Drupal, uh, enough to get by, feels a little bit like this, which is, you know, it's, it's a problem because every um, every 
site builder or every potential developer that we lose because of a bad experience, we're losing someone who can help make Drupal better. So these bad experiences, um, they reflect badly on us, I think, as a community. And Drupal has a reputation of requiring a special knowledge and special skills, which is a shame because it feels quite exclusive from the outside. But we all know being here, and I know that Drupal is a very inclusive and very friendly community. So I hope in some way that we've agreed or we agree with each other, UX is in some way important to Drupal. And by improving the user experience, um, it will make a big impact on Drupal's future. So who is responsible for the UX of Drupal? Is it designers, core developers, contrib module developers, or site builders? Yes, <laughs> it's, not a, um, it's not a trick question. It is all of us. Everyone is, everyone is responsible for the end user's experience. The designers, they can identify usability problems, and they can run research studies, and they can define new conventions. Core developers can, I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> they can build the framework that's usable and extendable by others. Contrib developers use and extend that framework. And that's a really important point because there is no Drupal install, or maybe there's one or two, but there aren't many Drupal installs that are run without contrib modules. And the way they affect the user interface uh, affects their experience. And site builders, they have the ultimate responsibility because they plug all these Lego blocks together and they build the final product that the client uses. So they have that final responsibility. But it doesn't stop there because the client is in the position to feedback from their perspective and we can use that feedback to provide new insights and improve Drupal even further. So, so the good news is that Drupal's UX is progressing, it is getting better. But the problem is that as the UX progresses, the expectations also start to move ahead of us. So we're always trying to catch up. So let's look a little bit about how um, Drupal's core experience has evolved over the past few years. So this is Drupal 6. Um, out of the box, it didn't have an admin theme. Uh, it didn't have a persistent navigation. And it was quite tricky to use without knowing the right cocktail of contrib modules to install uh, to make it usable, which is tough if you're new because you might not even know what a module is or how to install it. Drupal 7 was a, a big step forward. Uh, it had its first dedicated admin theme, uh, which means we, we could really shape and tweak the, the way we use Drupal uh, from an admin's point of view. So that was a big step forward. And in, in Drupal 8, uh, we've taken that and we've moved it on even further. And I'm going to come back and talk about the work we've done in Drupal 8. But I, I also want to talk about Drupal's contrib experience and how, um, how the contrib modules affect the experience of using Drupal as well. So, so this is panels. Um, it's, it's an interesting uh, design, I suppose, because it, it reuses a lot of components that already exist within Drupal core. You can see um, where it defines the context over there near the top. Uh, it has the name of the, of the context, and it has some buttons that you press. That goes in a table. By default, pretty much all the data we have in Drupal gets displayed into a table. That's just the default option, and there's no... Um, we haven't really explored a lot of opportunities to find the correct ways to display uh, different kinds of information. Larry, yes? Is it? Oh. Does this help? Uh, is there any, uh, is there an AV guy here? Do you think so? Hmm. You get to enjoy the dog pictures while I try and sort this out. Oh, I don't know. Wait a minute. Oh, could someone tell me which one? This one? All right. Same. Oh, wait a minute. 
เซอร์เวอร์ any different oh I've got them on this on this screen here um, oh how do I if I drag it over will that help oh here Oh, thanks. I didn't expect to have to learn this right now. <laughs> um, this is a pain. Um, has everyone here used panels? Can they use their imagination? Um, I think it might just be better for me to try and try and describe, and maybe if every guy turns up, then he can help me out. So. So Im imagine the panels interface. What you actually have um, along the top is a row of tabs uh, horizontally, and with, under them you have another row of tabs. Um, and I think at the top of the page you have some tabs anyway. It's a uh, it's a bit of a confusing interface. And along the side you have um, vertical tabs, and you actually have vertical tabs within vertical tabs within vertical tabs. Now I think the concept of vertical tabs got in introduced. Um, at some point in D7, it was very exciting. But I think the point I'm trying to make is that components that exist already in core can be misused, or they can be abused in certain ways because we don't provide the right guidance. Uh, so this isn't really a, a knock on the people who develop panels. It's really like there's a problem there that we don't provide the right guidance for contrib developers. Oh, still kind of washed out. So this is rules. If you've used rules, I'll describe it to you. Um, very powerful. Uh, very flexible module, but it um, is really just one big form. Uh, it's really kind of undesigned. There's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of uh, theming going on there, which is a you know it's a bit of a shame. But also it's a lot of work to try and design something from scratch. Uh, so maybe there are different ways. Maybe in Drupal 8, uh, the Drupal 8 version of rules where we can we can help and try and improve the design. And views, I want you know. I hope, hopefully, you've all used views. Um, it's a good example because technically, right now, it's in Drupal 8, it's in Core, but it feels different to every other page and every other interface in Core because it defines its own UI conventions and they don't get used anywhere else. So when you're using views, you have to learn all these new new UI conventions that you wouldn't use anywhere else on the system. So it's a problem because we don't have that many designers who contribute to Drupal. So we don't have the ability to pair up designers with contrib developers to help them give, to give them advice and help them improve the UI. We just don't have the manpower, so that's one big problem. I also wanted to quickly talk about the uh, UX improvements we've made in Drupal 8. So we introduced and redesigned a brand new toolbar that allows you to drill in uh, to the menu tree, and it helps you get around the interface a lot quicker. But it also has been designed with mobile devices in mind, so you can navigate the admin interface on a mobile device really easily. Uh, we've added a filter on the module page to allow you to find the modules that you want to modify or enable really quickly, which is a, which is a, a great improvement because the amount of time you spend scrolling around to try and search for the modules, uh, we probably saved months of people's lives for every developer. We've also redesigned the content creation page. You can see, well, maybe you can't see, sorry. Oh, thanks. Um, you can see along the left-hand side, uh, we have all the essential fields for the content type. Um, they're, they're all in one column. And then the non-essential uh, information about the node is on the right hand side and it's optional so you can get straight through the essential stuff and the other stuff doesn't get in your way it's a much better experience we also have a WYSIWYG a WYSIWYG in core which is amazing um, I think the first time I did this presentation uh, it was to some non Drupal people and they're like why is that amazing but they don't understand <laughs> so I mean it, it is actually it is actually really good because it as, it's not just CK editor dumped into core. Um, the Spark team have actually spent a lot of time tweaking the plugins, what you can do. 
you can add images, and you can add a basic link, and you can align images. And that's really nice to have that com configuration out of the box, because it's the kind of stuff you have to do for almost every client. So it's really nice. We've also added the quick edit module, which allows you to, uh, well, as uh, content creators, to to find the content that they want to edit, and they can edit it right there and then. They don't have to change pages. They don't have to change context. They can see what they want to edit it. But they can see what they want to edit. They can change it, and they can hit save, and it's done, which is, I mean, as controversial as that might be, it is a big improvement because it just, it just removes another step and another barrier. So... In a similar way to we, uh, in a similar way that we make design changes to contrib modules, um, we also make it in the same way for core. We kind of make UX improvements on a modular level on an issue per issue basis. Now, this is both good and bad because it means that we can make very detailed changes, but we can't really see an overview of how all these different changes come together and how they affect the general experience of using Drupal. This is how Drupal 8 looked. Um, after a few years of development. There was a lot of inconsistency that was introduced over several iterations and several issues. And this is what happens when you develop and design in separate silos on an issue per issue basis. So this is another problem, and how do we deal with this? So Frank Chamara wrote this amazing book called The Shape of Design. It's actually uh, free, available online. So I really suggest if you haven't read it to go and check it out. And he uses this really nice metaphor uh, for the design process of a painter. Because when you're painting, you sit very close up and you make the perfect tiny brush strokes. So you can see what you're doing in perfect detail. And this is great because you can make everything perfect. But after that, you take a step back and you look at how that change has affected um, the whole piece. Now we're very good at working on something in a lot of detail in design work. But something we're not very good at yet um, in the Drupal community is taking that step back and seeing how the design changes have influenced the entire experience. So over the past year and a half, I think, we've been working on a, a style guide for the seventh theme. And the seventh theme is the default admin theme that ships with Core. Now this style guide had, <clears throat> had several objectives. One was consistency to core and contrib modules, which we've never had before. We want the ability to make changes and see how that reflects the entire experience, both in core and contrib. It also had to be accessible and mobile friendly. And this is harder than it sounds, because obviously we have a great focus on accessibility throughout Drupal, but we've never really had the concept of using the interface on a mobile device. And some of the early work I did in Drupal 8 was to try and make the mobile, uh, the interface better on mobile devices. And it was really tough to take something that wasn't even considering mobile and just try and hammer it into a smaller space. It was really tough. Another thing we wanted to do is try and evolve the theme because in the past few years, uh, mobile operating systems have kind of changed the boundaries of, how you, um, of visual aesthetics and glow, uh, graphical user interfaces. So by comparison, Drupal felt a little bit dated. So it was a good opportunity to try and bring it up to date a little bit, make it feel a little bit more modern. But it also had to reflect Drupal's brand principles. Now, Drupal already has brand principles that were defined from the Drupal 7 UX work and the Drupal.org redesign. So we reinterpreted them, and we evolved the aesthetics based on these principles. I take it this doesn't show very well either. Just about. OK, so uh, Drupal has to be clear, direct, and concise. So we, we interpreted that as using a lot of crisp lines and solid color and just the right amount of white space in between all the elements. But Drupal also has to be calming. I mean, it's not always calming, but it should try and be calming, right? So we use a lot of des desaturated tones and a lot of rounded corners to emulate you know, softer edges and safer objects. Drupal also has to feel natural. It shouldn't feel inhuman or machine-like. So we use a lot of organic forms in the icon set that we designed to use with Drupal 8, and also in the typefaces that we choose. Everything is rounded as well in the same way. But Drupal also has to be friendly. So we 
we found particular points in the interface to add just a little bit of color here and there, not too much. So you can kind of see, if you look at how the interface stands now, that we've evolved the original visual language of the seventh theme. And I kind of see it as more of an evolution. I don't see it as a completely new theme. I think it still has the same principles of the seventh theme. They just evolved slightly. So we're still working on this. We still haven't finished. And we've been spending a lot of time on it. And if you're around on Friday, please do come along and try and help out because believe me you don't need to you know you don't need to be special to contribute to core i haven't done anything in contrib before and i find a way to contribute so please do come down so the seven style guide it looks very nice and we you know we updated the aesthetics and it works on mobile but beyond that there's a lot of potential to improve the overall experience of using drupal we're going to try and go out there and look at contrib and try and standardize it a little bit more try and find UI patterns that exist and pull them into core and pull them into the style guide so like all of Contrib modules can reuse these patterns instead of have to, have, having to redesign their own or having to design their own interfaces. We also want to figure out the best way to document the style guide. I really want to turn the style guide into a living uh, document that people can, that Contrib and core developers can use uh, to improve the design of the interfaces they build. And a good example of that is the iOS 7 design re resources. It has design principles and it has guidelines as well as examples of how the UI elements work. Here's an example of a date picker. It shows you what it looks like. It tells you what it's for, important. And it also links off to how, how you implement it and it links off to the API. Uh, the Ubuntu design guidelines. They're really good as well. It contains UI patterns and building blocks, and it offers guidance depending on what kind of audience you're talking to, whether it's commercial or community, or if it's a user or a developer. It's really interesting. So, turns out Drupal has uh, user interface guidelines. Hands up if you knew they existed. Hands up if you ever used them. Yeah, one person. <laughs> Every time I've given this presentation, there was no hands up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, what I want to do in the future, obviously there's a lot of improvements to make there because it's not well used or not well known. I kind of want to create our own mini bootstrap and I kind of want to create a, a visual API that can be easily reused. Now, whether you choose to use Twitter Bootstrap or whether you don't like it or if you're someone else who hates it, um, I still think there's a lot to learn from it because it is really popular. And I think it's popular because it's so easy to use. And I really want to find and build the same thing for us in Drupal. And I just think it's, it's so well documented and it shows you exactly what you need to know. And I think there's so many lessons that you can learn from it. So hopefully I think over time we can build the same kind of useful tool for the admin interface for developers of core, uh, of Drupal core, and of Contrib. So at the beginning of the presentation, I asked who is responsible for the experience of using Drupal. And I said it's up to the designers and the developers who work on core uh, to build the tools that are usable and extendable. So as, as you can see, we're, we're still working on that. But the rest of it is up to Contrib module developers and site builders. The rest is up to everyone else. Thank you. I'm, a, I'm sorry about the, the projector. Please do tell us what you think about that. Please leave feedback um, on the site. Or if you have any uh, feedback about the presentation, please come find me or please talk to me on Twitter. Uh, does anyone have any questions? That's also fine. So just to go on what you said about getting people at the sprint, um, sign up as a mentor if you've worked on core, mm -hmm. if you'd like to, or if you're a competent developer. Uh, we have a booth in the expo area to the left of the mechanical bowl. Um, do some paired programming and get other people involved in core as well. Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot, Eric. If there are no other questions, then please uh, tweet me or find me later or find me at the sprints. Uh, we can talk then. 
Thanks.